One. Hey, we're back. It's been a long time. We're back. We're in action. We are going to do the urinary system today. So we got a urinary system model here that we're going to go through. I got my purple pen to point at things. And we're going to start with a pair of kidneys. Got two kidneys here. One has been partially sectioned, so we can look inside it. Kidneys, of course, are going to always be making urine, making renin, making erythropoietin. Uh, on top of the kidneys, we've got a pair of adrenal glands, making adrenaline or epinephrine, making other hormones like cortisol and aldosterone, some sex hormones too. So kidneys right here are going to constantly be making urine. Urine's going to come out of the kidneys into the ureter, so we'll, the ureter will carry the urine down towards the urinary bladder. Ureters are nice retro peritoneal organs. They do some peristalsis, so the pee is moving even when you're lying down or you're upside down or whatever you're doing. So I thought we'd do the urinary bladder first and come back to the kidney. That's my plan. Here is the urinary bladder. We see nice folds in it. Folds are rugi, which let it expand and get bigger. We can't really tell, but the lining in here is transitional epithelium, which can stretch as well. There is a smooth region here called the trigone, where we have the opening for the ureter, opening for another ureter, and the opening for the urethra. The trigone kind of, I like to think it funnels the urine into the urethra. What else? What else? We've got a muscular layer here. This muscular layer is, is made of smooth muscle, and it's called the detrusor muscle. Detrude means to expel or throw out, and that's what it does to the urine. Right here, the detrusor muscle forms a sphincter. There's no difference in the color, but we know right there there is a sphincter. It is the internal urethral sphincter. It is involuntary. It is going to open up when you pee. Now, what else? We, can, of course, can tell this is a boy model, not a girl model. We have a prostate gland. We have a vas deferens or ductus deferens right there. And we got one over here. And I don't know if we can get underneath, but there's some seminal vesicles down there. Yeah. So, what else? What else? What else? I think that's pretty much it for the urinary bladder. If we wander back up to the kidneys, we've got the outside here. The outside that I'm touching and poking is the fibrous capsule. We see the indentation, the hilum here. We got a renal vein coming out, renal artery going in. And, all right, that's pretty much it on the outside. Let's wander over to the inside. We have some brownish things. These brownish things are the renal pyramids. Collectively, they make up the renal medulla. Outside of them, we have the renal cortex, which is where the urine is made. In between the pyramids, we have a little area of cortical-like tissue. This is a renal column right here. So in the renal cortex, we're making urine. The urine is constantly traveling through the renal pyramids through big collecting ducts. And the urine drips out of the tip of a pyramid. And the tip of a pyramid is called a renal papilla. And the little space... The little tube next to the renal papilla is a minor calyx. We have a minor calyx here, another minor calyx here, minor calyx right there as well. When minor calyces join together, like right here, we get a major calyx. All the major and minor calyces are eventually going to join together right in here, and we call this big wide region here the renal pelvis. Renal pelvis then exits the hilum and becomes the ureter. And I think that's pretty much all I want to do for this model.